So as part of Business Untitled, we're doing some sessions within our expertise. One of my expertise is, is real estate. I'm going to just talk a little bit about interest rates, uh, where the economy is headed, where real estate's headed, opportunities to make money and things like that. So hopefully you'll learn something. Interest rates matter to, in real estate a lot. Let's just start there. Real estate's a very capital intensive business. Everything that we build uh, takes a lot of money, effectively. So it's if you contrast it with something like a software business, it's very different. You need a lot of capital, right? So that means you got to borrow a lot of capital. The heart of real estate is being able to create the product and the market and the sales. But part of it is also understanding how capital structures work and how interest rates affect that. As a general rule, if interest rates are high, it's bad for real estate. If interest rates are lower, it's good for real estate. If you had a floating rate interest rate loan on a project and interest rates go up, you're gonna pay more in debt service. So that's not good. If interest rates are low, your debt service payments are lower. Um, you could have a loan coming due. When interest rates go up, then the value of the real estate is going down and you're more likely to have to do a pay down of your loan. Um, and the probably the most important reason that interest rates are very important for real estate is the valuation of real estate assets get priced according to where interest rates are. When you look at interest rates, the government risk-free return, whether it's short term or five year or 10 year, is considered the risk-free rate if I wanted to lend somebody money, I'd lend it to the US government because they'd have the highest likelihood of paying back. Pretty much all financial assets, including real estate, companies, things like that, are priced higher than this government rate. So as the Fed starts to play with interest rates, say on the short term or the 10 year, the cost of financing real estate goes up. And so you know this like in your own personal home, Two years ago, you could have got a mortgage at three and a half percent. Today, that is going to cost you 7%. So if you're borrowing a million dollars, you just went from a $35,000 a year interest payment to $70,000 a year interest payment. So somebody that might have been able to afford that house in that example at 35,000, maybe can't afford it at 70. And so the price has to come down in order to compensate for the interest rate going up. So. In general, interest rates going up, bad for real estate. If you look at real estate over the last uh, 30 years, we've had an environment of declining interest rates really since the 90s um, until very recently. And so part of the story of why real estate has done so well over these last 20 or 30 years effectively is that interest rates have been coming down. We're in an environment right now where interest rates are much higher than they've been for the past 20 years. The US government is considered the best credit in the world. Like if you were gonna lend somebody money and you wanted it paid back in 10 years, the chances that you get it paid back from the federal government would pretty much be at the top of the list. If I'm trying to borrow money from somebody and their choice is I could lend it to the government at 4%, why do I say lend it to the government at 4%? Because when you buy a treasury bond for 10 years at 4%, you're effectively saying, okay, government, I'm loaning you a million dollars, you're paying me 4% interest for 10 years. That has very little risk with it. If you wanna make more money on your million dollars in my example, then you might do something slightly riskier, but not too risky. So maybe residential real estate would fall in that category of being slightly risky. Hotels, a little bit riskier. Office buildings, a little bit riskier yet. Um, something that also would be not very risky is if I had Amazon on an office building. If I had an Amazon lease for 10 years, then I have their credit behind. So in real estate, like what the chances are that you're gonna default because the retail store goes out of business or 
the hotel operations are more complicated. These things all come into play. And so the safer a business is considered and residential apartments are considered pretty safe, um, the cheaper the financing is going to be because it's just a rational decision. If I'm going to ask you to borrow money, you're going to lend it to me at a cheaper rate than you would to, let's say, a new concept for a boutique hotel where you might perceive that there's more risk in that. Big picture, interest rates are interest rates being high affect real estate prices and they push them down. That's just the nature of the beast. 25, 30 years we've been in an interest rate environment where interest rates have been declining, declining, declining. And so in addition to rents rising, you've also had the cost of capital, right? Interest being reduced. And so that's been a really, really good environment for real estate over the last 20 or 25 years. The entire market has had a real bull run because of that interest rate behavior. Recently, interest rates have been going up and you might ask the question, why? Like, why don't we just make interest rates go down again? It's really hard to control interest rates, number one. The Federal Reserve has tools to help control interest rates. They try to control them because when capital, when money, credit gets too cheap, it overheats the economy. And so one of the reasons that interest rates have now, now gone up is as capital got cheaper and cheaper and the economy started to effectively overheat and really like the nail in the coffin for that in effect was co the COVID policies. And, and COVID policies had a big impact on that because we shut down the economy, but yet flooded a ton of money to people in the form of like these PPPs and payments and things like that. And so what that did is it just, um, it made the country, the economy awash in liquidity, but there weren't so many goods to buy at that point in time because we had shut the economy down. So instead of like investing money, putting capital into the system that then was gonna create more housing, more product, more, more goods, things were shut down, money went into the system. And so the economy really, in that context, overheated. And how do we know it overheated? Because inflation started going through the roof. Inflation is, is something that's really uncomfortable, as we know to people, particularly if you're on a relatively fixed salary, it's, it's unnerving to see price of groceries going up, price of oil going up, price of rent going up. Um, these are su super complex, dynamics that we're talking about but effectively as the economy was overheating as inflation was starting to become the reigning problem in the country the federal reserve had to take measures to combat that so what do they do they raise the short-term rate why is that important credit cards and all kinds of loans car loans any kind of floating rate debt credit mortgages get priced off of this um, interest rate that the Federal Reserve sets. So when you hear like the Fed has a meeting, I think it's coming up in a couple of days, <clears throat> and people are saying, oh, are they gonna raise rates? Are they gonna lower rates? Well, that has a tremendous impact on the economy because if they raise rates, everybody's credit card loan gets more expensive. Everybody's floating rate mortgage gets more expensive. And so the net effect of that is it starts to take money out of the economy because it makes credit more expensive. And so um, you might have you might have thought to yourself, oh, I'm going to spend money on this or that. But now your interest rate starts going up. You start saying, ah, you know what? I'm not going to make that purchase that I thought I was going to make because my money's tighter. That's what the Fed is trying to do when they're raising interest rates. Mm -hmm.